I love podcasts, video podcasts especially. I think they're one of the best types of content for anybody looking to start out content creation to make. They're so versatile in the way that they can be broken up into different pieces of content after the fact. Whether you have a co-host or you're solo interviewing people, having a podcast on video is awesome. But in 2021, it's not exactly the easiest to get people in the same room as you, which is where remote podcasting comes in. On face value, remote podcasting opens up the playing field immensely in terms of the people you can bring in because you don't always have to have somebody come to where you are, you can just do everything remotely. But it does come with a little bit more technical finesse as well. And that's what we're going to be talking about here today. My three favorite remote video podcast platforms in 2021. What's going on everybody? My name is Bobby Kwecki and welcome back to another video. If this is your first time here, hey, how are you? Nice to see you. I do videos like this pretty much each and every week. I'm trying to get them out as much as I can, all about online content creation and photo and video stuff. So if that's something you like, do me a favor. That, that button, that subscribe button, just hit it. You know you want to. Hit the bell too while you're there. So, online remote podcasting. It seems very daunting at first in terms of how to get somebody to see you, but also how to lay out the post-production workflow in a way that is time efficient and also makes sense, right? So that's kind of how we're gonna be tackling this. Number one thing is going to be obviously price. Number two thing is going to be quality of the video and audio you're getting back. And number three is going to be ease of use. So keeping all of that in mind, First off, we're gonna be talking about probably the lowest barrier to entry platforms and that does come with some caveats and that's gonna be Zoom. Zoom is something that over the last year has completely exploded in popularity and is super easy to use. You just send whoever you want the video link, you have them join and there's a record meeting button if you're the host, great. The pluses of Zoom are many, right? It is free up to a certain point, and then if you want to upgrade, it's at a pretty reasonable price. Actually, let me let me see how much that costs. So Zoom Pro, if you want to go like over 40 minutes, does come with a pretty hefty price tag of $149.90 a year, which comes out to like 12, 13 bucks a month, right? Which on its face value, is 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 a good chunk of change, but at the same time, you're getting that first 40 minutes free. So if maybe you're just starting out and you don't have a lot of air time to fill, Zoom is great, right? Super easy to use. You just click the record button. You choose where the file saves. The whole video is compressed into one thing, spits you out a, a file that you can throw into Premiere Pro, and you're ready to go from there. The downsides of Zoom are quite a few actually. Number one, the audio does get super compressed. So if maybe every person you're interviewing or maybe your co-host and you don't have the best audio set up at first, Zoom can kind of not be the best in terms of audio, right? It does sound a little bit compressed and everything is baked into one track. So if maybe your mic level is too high or too low or the person you're speaking to is you know too high or too low, it becomes a real pain to go in there and cut every, you know, your word, their word, your word, their word out and adjust the volume, the pitch, the gain, the EQ manually. Same thing with video quality as well. What you see is what you get with Zoom. You can't resize the video, you can adjust the resolution of each file, change the arrangement on the screen, but, but if you're just starting out in the video podcast space, in the video interview space, Zoom is great. Zoom will get your feet wet in the space, get you comfortable talking to other people for long periods of time, but let's let's say you wanna get a little more advanced, okay? Let's say you wanna take it up a notch. Where do you go from there? From there, to me, the road really branches out into two big players within the space. The first of which is called StreamYard, the second of which is called Riverside FM, and both have their merits and drawbacks, and we're gonna talk about those here. Disclaimer, both of these are paid services, right? StreamYard is going to cost you, I'm gonna talk about that one first. StreamYard a month is going to cost you 20 bucks a month for your basic plan. They have a free plan, but it's so bare bones, you almost have to pay for the basic plan with StreamYard if you want any of the features that make it different than Zoom, right? So for 20 bucks a month, you're getting StreamYard. Now, what does StreamYard offer you? Number one, StreamYard offers you the ability to add in overlays, add in an intro, add in any kind of branding you want right onto the screen as is. If you have like an intro bumper or an outro bumper, you can just 
add the video file in, you don't have to worry about OBS, especially if you're going live. And that's where StreamYard really has an edge. StreamYard is great if you are live streaming your podcast, your video interview, whatever it may be, StreamYard is great. It has baked in connectivity to Facebook, YouTube, Twitch as well, I believe. And again, all you do is you just send your co-host or the person you're interviewing the link, they join the chat, and you have the boxes there in front of you. And it's good, it's a little, it's built in, you know, you can switch from either a widescreen format or more of a portrait view side by side. Uh, they can share their screen, you can share their screen. Again, you can have those overlays and it's great. StreamYard I think is like that middle kind of workflow for people where you wanna get a little bit fancier, you wanna add some branding to your video podcast, but maybe you're not super technical with editing audio, you, you don't need all of the rough controls in front of you. And that's kind of where the downside is because like with Zoom, if a person's audio is too high, if a person's audio is too low, it's all baked into the one track, right? So what you hear and what you see is pretty much what you get. There's no sort of post-production workflow after the fact to edit things down to the fine point. But for live streaming, especially if you're doing interviews and podcasts, in my opinion, worth the money that they ask for solution. What if, what if you want something better? What if you want something real good? Something that will give you full creative control, something that is so mind-blowingly great that right now it is my favorite online podcast platforms. It's what I use for work to create remote podcasts and is like one of the coolest things ever. And that's called Riverside FM. Now Riverside FM, much like Zoom and much like StreamYard is a platform where you just send somebody a link and they join. Cool, right? You This this, this is the theme. You sense this theme here. You send somebody a link, they join, you see them, you record it, pop, 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 pop. You send it out, cool. The thing with Riverside FM though, and the thing that I think is the best part is it gives you each individual file on its own, both a video and an audio file. So while you can get a baked in file if everybody's using a pro setup and everybody's good to go, cool, awesome. Saves you the editing time on the back end. But if you want, with Riverside FM, you can get an individual photo, an individual video file, audio, not photo, no, I said photo, individual audio and individual video file for each person in the meeting, in the interview, in the podcast. So after the fact, if you wanna change uh, who's speaking at once, if you wanna kinda create like a multicam edit, you can go back and forth. If you want everybody on screen at once, you can have everybody on screen at once. If one person's too loud, if there's that one guy who's like, He's, he's eating his microphone. You guys, you guys have heard that, especially when you're like playing Call of Duty, the person who's eating their microphone. If you're if you're podcasting with that guy, you can just lower his gain, lower the output, mess with the EQ, but only on his file if everybody else is good. And that is awesome. That being said, it is a paid service, like 24 bucks a month. Um, at like the pro tier, but there's like one smaller tier here, the standard tier, which gives you five hours of recording a month, which for me, I think is like more than enough if you're doing like one hour episodes of podcasts, if you're just starting out. Riverside FM is my favorite creative tool right now. I think uh, after Anchor, it's like the best thing in the online podcast uh, content creation space right now. While it doesn't have the same functionality of StreamYard where you can add your branding and add your logos inside of Riverside FM, that's not really what it's for. It's not really catered for a live streaming thing. It's really more towards recording the content for post-production after the fact, where you can add your bumpers, you can add your logos, all of that good stuff. So that's what I would recommend to everybody. It has a live streaming feature in it if you wanna do it like StreamYard, but it doesn't have all those little bells and whistles for live streaming like StreamYard does. That's why I said kind of branches out. It really depends what it is you're going for. For me, for my money, I think Riverside FM is the absolute best podcast platform out there. But if you're just starting out, go with Zoom, if you're looking to get a little bit more intense, maybe try StreamYard. Whatever you do, any of those three, you really can't go wrong with. You're gonna be able to get your finished product either way. And that's it for now, guys. But let me know down below what you think. Do you use Riverside? Do you like StreamYard? Whatever it is, I'm more than happy to hear and talk about it with you guys in the comments. And until next time, take care of yourselves. We'll talk real, real soon.